Gascano here, and if you're planning a round-the-world adventure or an extended trip several months, maybe possibly several years like I am, stick around because in this video, I'm going to tear apart everything on this motorcycle and show you exactly what I'm carrying. I'm gonna start with telling you everything that's on my bike, some extras that I put on to make things easier. I'm gonna talk about the luggage that I carry, why I, I use the Moscow Moto system, and uh, I'm gonna tell you pretty much everything you need because the fact is, you only really need five things to do a round the world trip. If you're gonna be riding a motorcycle or a van or a car, you're gonna need uh, obviously your passport, you're going to need a driver's license, your registration, the title of your vehicle. So if you don't own your vehicle outright, that's gonna be a problem because you're not gonna be able to transport it to, through different countries because you're gonna need what's called a TIP or a carnet. And lastly, you're going to need a card, credit card and cash. Okay, so that's either or. You could just bring a bunch of cash and usually you wanna bring American dollars because if you're going through Central America, then they're going to ask for dollars. They don't want, in Nicaragua, they're not gonna ask for colones or, or whatever. So they're gonna want dollars, so have cash on hand. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna start with actual motorcycle itself. So the first component you see here is a ram mount. This is simple, I have my iPhone attached here. I have this hairband, very important because I wrapped that around because the elastics that came with it died after about five months or so. They broke, disintegrated, and that's just normal because of the elements. So I got a, a little hair tie. This has been perfect and it's saved. So it keeps it nice and secure in here. I also taped down all of these little additional these little rubber thingies because these grommets, they're gonna fall off eventually. So put some electrical tape here, some duct tape on this one, and it seems to do a great job. It locks in there. I put this little secure fastener and this thing is not going anywhere. I'm very happy with that. Originally, I had a, I didn't have a case on here and I had an iPhone on here and it slipped through, it fell, fell out one day, it broke disintegrated and uh, caused me the worst nightmare ever. I was in Mexico four days, literally without a phone, without directions, without maps in Michoacan, and that, that turned out to be a nightmare. So get yourself a very good RAM, whatever the mount is, and make sure that your phone is always locked and fastened to it because believe it or not, somehow with the vibration of the bike and the bumps everywhere, that phone will come loose and one day it's gonna fall out and break. So don't make the mistake that I made make sure that it's always fastened there. The second thing I have here is, is a GoPro uh, mount. This is how I keep it. I kind of like it, although I probably don't need all this extra funky stuff to it. Um, it just works out because if I ever need it, I can break off the zip ties and then I've got a, a, a handheld system here. But this kind of works fine. I don't mind it. It's nice and clean and it's new. So the next thing on the, uh, on the bike that's kind of a custom thing that I appreciate are these two auxiliary lights down here. These turn on, they're extremely bright. Off-road at night, they throw in a little bit of extra light down right in front of me where I really need it, and so that, that makes a huge difference. Let's see, what else do I have here? I've got another little mount here. This is where I sometimes attach a GoPro so I can have some footage of the front wheel. I've got a lock here. This is a kryptonite lock. It's one of the smaller ones. It's extremely well rated. This with kryptonite uh, cord here. I've locked up the bike here. I just put it basically through through the main part here and uh, lock it around a pole and it's been fine. I've never had a problem with it. You don't want to be leaving the bike on the, on the street. I heard a nightmare. I met a guy actually at the Nicaraguan border who they stole his license plate. He was coming from Washington. They came one night, they took his license plate and pretty much his bike was doomed. He could not travel from country to country anymore. Basically uh, had to give away his bike or, or sell it for like $500. Uh, it was a $3,000 bike. So that license plate could be a nightmare. If they take your license plate, you're, you're gonna be doomed. So make sure that you keep the bike at night locked somewhere secure. Although I've never had a problem with anybody messing with my bike, only one thing where they stole a couple of tent poles. I left it in a thing in a little bag here and it might've been out of hostel that I stayed at. So my advice is keep, always keep your bike locked up or just stored somewhere safe. I've used that lock once on this whole trip in six months. So I've been everywhere, some of the worst, sketchiest parts of uh, Mexico, all through Central America, I've never had a problem. Again, pretty much everywhere you go, they're gonna have a parking or they'll have a place where you can keep it and it's safe and, and there's always security. So that's that's not really an issue. So one thing that's it's important, always keep a photograph of your passport on your phone and have photocopies of your passport your driver's license, your registration, and the title for your motorcycle or your van or your car. Because if anything happens, 
at least you know you'll have copies and at times you'll get to a border crossing and they'll ask you for a copy of your passport they'll say you need to go down the street go get a photocopy somewhere but if you already have the photocopies it's going to save you a lot of trouble plus if you don't have the cash in the local currency and you know you're not going to have to go hunt for an atm so it makes it a lot lot easier again always have dollars because dollars pretty much work everywhere for the most part and have copies of all your documents so that if anything does happen or if you need them you've, you've got those and you don't have to go get copies somewhere else Let's talk about uh, the, the system that I use right now. I've got the Moscow Moto, I believe this is the 80, it's the uh, Revolver 80. So 80 liters of basically storage for the most part. I haven't measured, I don't know if it's exactly 80 liters. I'm gonna trust that that's about 80 liters worth of stuff, which would be like a very big backpack, okay? As you can tell, the 230s on the side are completely loaded up. There's pretty much no more space. All of this is completely waterproof. Uh, it works, works really well keeping out the dust, keeping everything out. They're very rugged. I'm very happy with the quality of the material. I actually keep my shoes here. This is how I ride with my shoes on the side here. I've never had them fall off except once and that was my bad because I didn't tighten this down. But if you tighten this down, these are not gonna go anywhere. These, these are pretty much staying in here. I did get the additional little components. These little, uh, this is, they call this two liter. There's no way this is two liter. I don't know why they call that two liter. Um, it's more like maybe a liter and this they call four liters i again i would say that those are definitely way smaller than four liters i'm gonna go ahead and take off all the luggage and show you exactly what i carry on this trip and and i go pretty heavy i mean i've got some climbing gear harness climbing shoes and a, and a chalk bag that if unless you're a rock climber you're not going to need that sleeping bag a tent sleeping pad a lot of clothes. I've, I'm wearing jeans today and a long sleeve because I'm in Costa Rica and you'd think it would be warm, but it's actually pretty chilly right here, right now. It takes up quite a bit of space, probably about this much of my 30 liter bag. I also have a few other items that you might not need or not want. But the fact is that I've been traveling. I left Los Angeles back in December, 31st of December last year, 2021. And for the last six months, it's now July 5th. I've been through temperatures as low as 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about minus five or six Celsius and as high as 40 degrees centigrade, which is about 108 Fahrenheit. Extremely hot to extremely cold. So I'm gonna go ahead now and take everything off, open everything out, lay it all out for you so you can actually see how much stuff I'm able to carry with this system and exactly what I'm carrying.